Hello! Welcome back to my channel. If you'd like to see my opinions, thoughts, complaints on all the foundations that I've purchased so far this year, um, keep on watching. My name is Allison. I'll be your host today. In response to all of the foundation roundup reviews that I've seen all over the internet because it's foundation season in the makeup world and personally I have had enough. <laughs> I've purchased my little assortment and um, I'm going to use what I have before I damn well come up with another foundation. I decided I looked at purchase histories, I dug through all my drawers, pulled things out, went ham, went turkey, went egg salad. And I figured let's talk about all the foundations that I purchased this year. Not, you know, outside of the foundations I've purchased this year, when I look at even years before this or how many other foundations I actually have in my drawers, the number is less than the number I'm going to talk to you about. So. I tripled, quadrupled my foundation assortment just in the past nine months and I am not a booty guru. I don't even wear foundation on a daily basis. So what the fuck? Apparently I fell for a lot of consumerist tactics because I look at this pile and I got got. So, without further ado, I'm going to start with my least favorite and kind of work up to my fufa favorite. I have 11 foundations total. I have a mixture of different things. I have liquid powders. I have BB creams. I have CC creams. Yeah. So I'm going to use some of the things that I wrote down. Uh, these are reference points, things that I was kind of grading these foundations on that I'm going to review with you really quick. So let's talk about it. Um, in all of these foundations I considered, um, did it wear well on its own? Did it wear well with other products? Like did it layer well? Um, did the foundation itself layer well? Like doing a second coat, how did that turn out? Uh, transferability is a big thing. Like I'm wearing a black shirt. Come on meow. I don't. Uh, does it wear long? Like, how does it wear? How does it break up? You know, with some foundations, when it starts to look cakey and you rub it, and it looks even more cakey, like it's cake amplified? That's something that I've seen consistently happen for me with certain foundations. Not specifically the ones we're talking about, but just in general. So that's something I always look for. Uh, how long before it really starts to break up? When you see patches of your skin kind of showing through or you know where it's just gone by the end of the day. Um, if I would consider it a product purchase regret, like did I regret purchasing it at all? Um, how was it with application? Was it finicky to work with? Do you have to put it on a specific certain way to make it look good? Is it layerable with certain products but not others? Like how bullshitty is it? I'm kind of moving to the other side of the spectrum. Some of these things, you know, would I consider them more of a holy grail status? Are they going to be worth repurchasing? Am I going to repurchase it? X, Y, Z, L, M, N, O, P. Okay, so. I say, okay, so. I say, so. Way too fucking much. I know. I'm going to start with least favorite to my most favorite. All of these can be found at Sephora because I actually added them all to my cart so I can reference the volume and price easily. But looking at how much I've spent on these foundations so far this year makes me want to throw up in my mouth. I didn't buy all of these. Let's see. I didn't buy all of these at full price. Some of these I got with Ulta points and some of these I got with 20% off, blah, 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 blah. One of these I did get for free. So I'll let you know as we go through the list. <sighs> Damn. So the, the 11 foundations that I have here in front of me were $487.50 before tax, all at regular price. Shit. That is not cool. 
I'd say realistically, I probably spent around 400, being that I got one free some sale. Yikes. Okay, let's jump into this. All right, first up, unfortunately, this is my least favorite item. This is the Kosas Tinted Face Oil. I bought this on March 18th, and this retails for $42. Mmm, this is so super runny. You're only supposed to use like a few drops at a time. But the issue that I had with this, it felt great on the skin, but no matter what, if you rub it around, you rub it on your face, no matter how much you put on, it dries to this awkward, weird powderiness that almost emphasizes all the little baby hairs on your face, emphasizes everything on your face. Its transferability is ridiculous. Like No matter what, there's no level of being able to set this to where it stays in place all day. It just falls so flat for me because it has no actual ingredient to help it just be foundation. It's just literally pigment suspended in oils. It's just fucking ridiculous. I hope Kosas comes out with something else in the future. See, now my arm feels really nice and hydrated from those oils, but it's a no for me, dog. Number two, this is my second to last place loser. This is the Eborian BB Cream. I... Man. So, I bought this when Eborium first came to Ulta, which... Ulta, you can't really dig through your purchase history, which I find to be terrible uh, for specific occasions like this. I believe I got it around April, May-ish. But the reason why I wanted to try the BB Cream was because I love the CC Cream. I actually have a third tube of the CC Cream because this was getting so empty. This was $39. And the reason why I like the don't like this is ultimately this has such a pinky gray tone to it that every time I've worn this, I look so fucking dead. And there's no amount of warmth of a bronzer or anything that can make me look better. It just, it's terrible. And on top of that, I've mixed it with certain powders and it instantly my skin looks very cakey. I've noticed that this will break up on my skin as opposed to the CC cream kind of is bulletproof. I was really looking for the same kind of you can trust this with no problems whatsoever and I was really let down. It says it has a baby skin effect. No. But I'm so sad that other items within the Iborian line, which I love so much, did not work well for me. We are quickly stepping into the realm of hurting feelings. I got this on launch day. I just don't like it. I'm gonna sound like a brokered record, but I'm gonna continue to play with it. I even saw in somebody's video where they said that they mixed this with the Pat McGrath foundation because one's a little bit thinner and one's a little more thick, 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 uh, and it worked really well for them. I even tried that, still didn't fucking like it. It's, it's so fucking thick. You can feel it on your face. And when I played with this and when I tested it, I mean, it goes for days. I'll give them that. I need to try this a little bit more sheared out. But every time I've really just genuinely tried to play with it, 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 it creased instantly. So ABH's big claim in launching this product was, oh, you don't have to set it with a powder. Even though we're releasing five, six shades of setting powders, you don't have to set this with a powder. You don't. It's going to be fine. It's not going to crease. You don't have to set it with a powder. It has a beautiful dry down. It's luminous without needing to be set with a powder. Like it was, that was emphasized so much to where I was just like, let's fucking see because your bitch is too old for a fuckload of powder. And it creased like a motherfucker. I mean, every single emphasizing line, it was hazmat. It was terrible. It was 
terrifying. I have a video about it. Watch if you'd like to see how bad that went down. I regret purchasing that for sure. For absolute sure. So the next two I'd like to kind of talk about in conjunction together. I bought these a month separate from each other. So I purchased, I really want to put these in the same position. Like one is not ahead of the other. But I'm actually debating on doing a video battling both of these out, like doing a full wear review of one, doing a full wear review of either. Uh, two super high-end, hyped up foundations. Pat McGrath, I purchased $7.25 for $68. And then the Guerlain <clears throat> Le Essentiel Natural Glow Foundation, Foundation, 16 hour wear with sunscreen, 97% naturally derived ingredients. That I purchased on August 25th, this was $60. So let me just tell you this right off the bat, if you're looking for something to be luxurious, and be skin-like and blah blah blah, light medium coverage, all the things that this talks about for eight dollars less and it looks bougie as fuck, do this. Do this ten times over. These are smack dab in the middle of my list because I didn't love it, I didn't fucking hate it. You know what I mean? I could put these on, so from here on out let me just tell you like I'm talking about both of them equally. They both have the same texture. Actually, I'm going to swatch them. I'm going to swatch Guerlain first. So to me, they both have similar texture. They both end up looking the exact same on the skin. Very skin-like finish. They sink in fairly well. This cap is so cheap feeling. Okay. The colors are just ever so slightly different from each other. This is the Pat McGrath side, this is the Guerlain side. Guerlain, doesn't matter. Um, for me, both of these emphasize texture on my face because they do sink in and you know blur out nicely, but they also sink into every fucking crevice you have. They stay there, thankfully, but they're still there. So you can see everything on your face, but um, I did a review on the Pat McGrath, and the thing I noticed is that even though it filled these lines, it never moved around. It never moved out of that void like the ABH did, where no product would be in those lines, emphasizing them insanely. It would just be there, and it was almost like a little bit of a, a highlight on my face that I did not want or ask for, but I still got. Uh, the other thing with these two is the dry down doesn't really happen and I've seen that in other reviews about the Pat McGrath but not mentioned so much about the Guerlain or Guerlain is that it, it still feels like it's wet even though it's been set with powder it just feels like it's wet. I noticed that and I noticed the tackiness with the Pat McGrath just a lot longer than I do with this one. Uh, lastly the transferability. Both of these transfer easily. Even though they're still wet on my hand and that's not really a fair chance. Even if you set it. Again, maybe I've got to find a certain setting powder that works perfect. Maybe I'm still searching for, you know, the right magical combination for it to work right. But for me, they're fairly fucking finicky. I've tried it with my hands. I've tried it with a brush. I still have to try it with a sponge, but being that they're so watery sheer foundations to begin with. I feel like a sponge would be kind of a lost cause situation, but we'll see. To me they just look, I don't know, they come off almost not cakey but 
you can see the product sitting on top of the skin in an awkward way, I feel. Having tried their Guerlain, I genuinely have to say the Pat McGrath I wish I would not have purchased. Being that now I have the experience, well, I definitely would have wanted a sample, but being that I've tried both of them now and seeing how similar they are and how fucking expensive they are and how bougie and cute this is compared to this, I would choose the girl on over the Pat McGrath. Let's move on. The Laura Mercier Flawless Lumiere Radiance Perfecting Foundation. Fond Tint Perfection Eclat. So, I got this from Influencer. Otherwise, this would be a $48 foundation. I got this around, I want to say, February, March, something like that. I like this foundation. The shade that I got is way too dark for me. And I've gotten samples in store before in my actual shade. And so I've tried it, and I've worn it a few different ways, and here's what I gotta say about it. Um, it definitely stays on your face. I don't think it has that much of a transferability to it. It doesn't transfer like a lot of other things. Like it's gotta be worn for a long time, maybe an all day kind of situation before it really starts to just, the oils on your face are what's breaking it apart and that's what's rubbing onto your shirt. Uh, for me, I just didn't like the way that this sat on my skin. I feel like it just genuinely sat on my skin. Again, gotta try it. It's not in my right shade so I don't feel very compelled to fuck with it a lot, <laughs> all the time, or at all, period. Um, but if I had it in my shade, or if I had a beautiful tan like this, I would play with it more. Uh, it, it sits on the skin weird, and I noticed that it can have that cake factor to where if you have a cakey area and you go to like tap it out, fix it, add a little excess powder, mist it, doesn't fucking matter. <clears throat> it does that emphasizing the cakey factor that I just hate in certain foundations when you just want to touch something up or like kind of rub and blend something out and it just fucks up. Something else about the Laura Mercier that I noticed was it's not a luminous foundation. To me it actually kind of set very matte, like it almost looks like something I have on today if it was the right shade for me. Um, it definitely didn't have that luminizing factor so it makes me wonder like how would the Laura Mercier, the like, flawless something, Flawless Fusion Matte Foundation, how would that look compared to this? And I'm curious if I had both side by side how they would actually pan out. Would one be more like soul sucking matte and the other one's just like matte? But to me there's no like actual luminosity to it. I feel like I actually had to mist a lot and really moisturize a lot for it to not look so fucking matte. So I think that the name itself was intriguing and very inviting, but also very misleading in actually using the product. So I'm sorry. Alright, the Clinique Super City Block. I bought this um, in foundation season, July-August time period. I got this from Ulta. It was $26.50. Um, I got this because it's an oil-free daily face protector, uh, SPF 40. And in looking at the ingredients, um, this is just a tinted fucking moisturizer. This is a little bit higher in the list, you'll see, uh, for one fucking reason. I bought this just trying to have something like an everyday, if I wanted to wear makeup to work. It's a little streaky at first, but I just continue to rub it in. The color, it's sheer. Like, it's fucking sheer to light coverage. Uh, but it wears really nicely throughout the day. I don't look oily, I don't feel oily, and this has like an insane amount of reviews online to where, see my hand just looks like my hand. It doesn't look like emphasized texture, it just looks like my hydrated hand that's a little bit blurred out. I like it. I went through a phase in trying all these foundations where I wanted to make sure I had like a daily protector, an SPFer, something I could mix with other things or you know whatever the situation might actually be. And I think this works great. It lives up to the hype of all the foundations it has. It's the cheapest on the list. I'll give it that. I appreciate that. And I definitely need to wear this more. Um, I do like it. It does give you a good glow, but that's because it is basically a tinted moisturizer. So the next four things are really just top of the list for me. These are on their way to being holy grail status and all of which all four of these so far are definitely things that I plan on repurchasing once I completely run out of them. 
Uh, this is the Makeup Forever Matte Velvet Skin Fond de Tint Powder Floater Blurring Powder Foundation. Um, this is the first powder foundation I've purchased in a while with its little poof. Both sides of this poof are um, fucking delightful. You could wear this over hydrated skin just by itself and it'd be fine. What I like to do is take a light brush and use it almost as a setting powder, but it gives you so much more coverage. So if I don't want to wear a concealer under my eyes, I can use that to lightly set and it gives you another layer of coverage. It's beautiful. It really does blur. It doesn't cake at all in my opinion. I'm really just shocked and it's got me more impressed with powder foundation. So I, I'm really glad I purchased this. It's a nice addition. It's a sturdy as hell case and this I think is ultimately going to be the replacement for this. So once I completely hit pan on this powder here, which gives you some coverage, this is going to be that go-to pressed powder that I always reach for, always travel with. Tra la 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 la, Siskumba. This is great. I would encourage anybody to try this out. Um, 10 out of 10 would recommend. Something else I'm obsessed with. This is the Laura Mercier Tinted Moisturizer Illuminating. This is the illuminating one, not the regular one. The reason why this is not just straight up number one is the illumination on this is fucking intense. I have to reach for my matte blurring foundation just for the simple fact that I can be a little tin man looking. So look at that. Oh, it gives such beautiful coverage. It sinks into the skin perfectly. It genuinely at the core is a tinted moisturizer. It just veils your face in such a beautiful fucking way that this is something that is competing with my CC cream for an everyday use. I am probably, hmm. oh yeah, I can actually see it inside of here when I hold it to the ring light. So I'm like right here on this. And these are 1.7 ounce containers. Oh, I'm sorry, this is $38. So this tinted moisturizer is $47. I tried this on a whim in store and this is before they did their repackaging, all that kind of jab, adding more colors. I just put some of this on the back of my hand and was like shook. Like instantly just fucking taken it back and purchased it immediately. This is great for ultra glowy days. This is great for just blurring out your skin, run into the grocery store. It layers well with everything. It's a great light coverage foundation, period. Uh, the only reason why it's not number one in this video is because when I want to repurchase this, I'm going to buy the tinted moisturizer and not the illuminating one because this gives you some fucking glow, like in a ridiculous amount of glow that I have a plethora of other products I would like to blow through that offer that service for me. This should come to no surprise to you that it's so high up on the list. This is the Stay Naked Foundation. This is actually what I have on my face today. I used this with a sponge today for, I want to say the first time, I actually got the Elsie Cosmetics sponge that I I think it's quite nice to be honest with you. I've already noticed some fuzz coming off of this sponge. I'm a little pissy about but I got it on sale. It was free shipping. I digress. Um, I love this. You can rub this in with your hands. I have mixed this with the Laura Mercier uh, Illuminating Tinted Moisturizer. Long fucking name. It blends well. It plays well with other things. I just like it. As long as you hydrate your skin, moisturize it well beforehand, this lays perfectly. It does not settle. It does not crack. Absolutely. 110%. I will rebuy this once it's empty. I have worn this on days for up to seven, eight, nine. 10 hours in a day and it still looks fucking great. I've been in super hot fucking places with no AC. Didn't touch my face otherwise it would have fucking come off. Beating sweat and it was fine. It was fucking fine. And that, that is what you look for in a, in a ride or die situation and I'm forever grateful. How much is that shit? 
The Stay Naked Foundation was $39, so thank God it's not the most fucking expensive thing on my list. I purchased that. I purchased that when it first came out by coincidence, to be honest with you. I walked into an Ulta and saw the display and was like, Ooh, no foundation! And it was the first thing... I bought it before the ABH, before the uh, Pat McGrath, before the Guerlain, before the City Block. And I think it sent me into a spiral of trying more foundation. I think I even said that in my foundation video. That I was excited to continue to play with foundations because of this hoe right here. And boy was I wrong. I should have just stopped here and saved myself so much fucking money. It's impressive. It, it really has been the only thing in things that I've tried lately and just in general because I have a lot of good staple foundations that I have in my drawer. I'll do a declutter and makeup inventory in the next month probably before we hit October because in October we do Halloween. The only thing that I can say about the Stay Naked foundation is when I first got it I got the wrong shade because on the back of my hand and for the first few minutes it looked great and it darkened up as it dried down and oxidized whatever the fuck it did it changed colors to where I wore it once on my face went out in public and when I got home I realized I was a member of the lollipop guild It was so bad. Mm. But now I have the right shade and I'm fine. Long story short. Alright, here's number one. Number one. So, this is why I really wanted to include everything this year because there's certain things where I'm just like, but is it this though? No, it's not. And this I actually bought at the end of February this year and it is the Milk Makeup Sunshine Skin Tint. Now, let me tell you something, dog. This shit comes with a expiration date printed on the bottle that has fucking rubbed off. See this, this black shit right here? That used to have a printed expiration date. And it said June of this year. <laughs> but you know what? Fuck that. I tried to use this up in my project pan and I was just like, I don't want to blow through it. I like it too much. Um, I think I saw Alana Rama, uh, Alana Davison on YouTube use this first and I was just like, hmm, are you doing? I don't want to waste it, I like it too much. But this gives, like, your skin is fucking dewy. You can set it with powder if you want to, but why would you? Because you look so fucking good. Uh, this just blurs out into, like, it looks like there's just nothing, like it just went away on your skin, but what you're left with is just this nice, beautiful glow and your face is instantly transformed into supermodel skin. I don't know how else to put it. Um, it's oil based and this is what I wish the Kosas could be. Like this is just a little bit thicker and things work with it. I can use powder foundations on this after a while if I let this dry down before setting it or I can lightly set it with a powder uh, and then use powder products like bronzers and blushes this is my holy grail when it comes to using a cream bronzer and a cream blush. Those three things together, that's all I, could, I I leave the house and like conquer the fucking world. It is insane how much I love this stuff. Like, I don't know if you can tell, I've had 11 foundations on my hand, so I could be completely wrong. But my skin is so blurred out. This fills and blurs perfectly. I cannot stop. I literally cannot stop. I'm ridiculous right now. The only terrible thing about this is that it's not the cheapest product and sometimes it's not always in stock which makes me worry but I hope Milk Makeup doesn't ever discontinue some of my favorite products because I will come for you <laughs> and your entire family if you ever take it off the shelves. Uh, this is $42. You get 0.7 ounces, so you're not getting a full ounce of product, which everything else that I've shown you, you get at least an ounce, if not more. How dare you. And what I noticed at the time, so I bought this in February, end of February. I didn't look at the expiration date until I had it at home, like opened it and was like looking at it and was just like, ooh, I'm so excited to play with this motherfucker. 
I realized that the expiration date saying June, I should have flipped through all the bottles instead of just grabbing one and putting it in my cart. And I know that for the next time I purchase that too, look for one that has the furthest out expiration date instead of one that has three months to go. Because I do worry about when I use this, like what's really happening, what's going on. I don't fucking know. But um, if you like light coverage, that is just the wind beneath your wings. So this, when I run out or whatever the fuck happens to it, I will repurchase. If it starts to kill me after a little while, I'll throw it away and repurchase it. It's that great. <laughs> I hope this foundation review roundup was helpful in some fucking way possible. If you have any questions, please leave them in the down bar below. Uh, the look that I have on my face today, I actually did a makeup tutorial on. It's in a no brand tutorial that will be up as well at some point or may already be up depending on the order of editing that I do with these videos. And if you've tried any of these foundations, let me know. Tell me what you thought about them, if you have any holy grails that are different from mine. But I wanted to really just kind of showcase the foundations that I have tried specifically in this year. Okay, thank you guys so much for watching this video. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to my channel while you're here. I appreciate it. And uh, as always, I'll see you in the next video. I eat. Bye!